Welcome, everyone, to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Hi, my name is Steve Lacey. And my name is Phil Thompson. Seems like it's been forever, Steve. I know. I left town on you. Yeah, you did. Last and uh, we can. Oh, yeah. And you were having other guests. So, yeah. Who yeah, needs I had me? A, I had a guest uh, who had to counsel on me and then he counseled again. <laughs> But he's going to be with us next week. He guarantees it as much as he can guarantee it. And actually next week, next podcast, we'll talk about church safety and how it pertains to uh, a lot of it will pertain to an active shooter. Not all of it, but most of it will. So we'll, uh, we'll speak with Jim Sparks about that next week. But what are we going to talk about today, Steve? So today, how your church can make a good impression. How Your Church Can Make a Good Impression. Uh, Jessica Mitchell is a freelance writer who uh, I grabbed some of these uh, uh, notes from and modified them a little bit, as only I can do. But uh, we're talking not just a, not just a, like a first impression, but uh, an impression that kind of is a lasting impression. And uh, you like stats, right, Steve? I do. I'm a stats guy. You do. You are. And uh, according to uh, some recent stats, church attendance has been on the decline in 2000. In the year 2000, 58% of uh, adults had attended church at least uh, at least last month. And then in 2015, they did the same deal. Only 46% of adults had attended church in the last month. So that's a 12% difference there uh, going the wrong way in about 15 years. And so it's real important that we, you know, we and we emphasize this a lot here, uh, you know, on, on doing things right when you're trying to reach people, because we assume everybody's trying to reach people. Uh, hopefully you are. And uh, there are some tips here that I think would be very helpful. Yes. So we've got, did we count them? Uh, we got maybe I six, think six or seven. Half six a or dozen. seven. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more if we keep going. All right. But uh, we'll go through some of this quick. Some of this, like the first one here, is kind of a no brainer. We've talked a lot about it. The first one is your website. Your website is now really the, the front door of your church. I mean, that's really what it's become. Uh, and again, a nice little stat here 90% of the people, over 90% of the people, visit your website before visiting your church in person. So it's important to understand why you want to make sure your website's up to date. And there's a several things here we can talk about and list uh, just very quickly. And yeah, and we, we kind of, you know, we, we provide live streaming for churches and we get new churches signing up. And we make these judgments every day because they'll provide their website and we'll go take a look and go, hmm, you know, yeah. well, it, it forms a, it is the front door and it's your first impression and it, it's, it says a ton. I mean, you can tell a lot yeah. um, about what a church is like um, just by going to their website. So. That's, that's so true. So uh, some, here's a, several things that you should have on your website. Uh, and I hope <laughs> some of these are no-brainers. I mean, your service times, right? Your service times ought to be on there very clearly, whether you provide a children's ministry or a nursery. Uh, your location, obviously, is very important. <laughs> Maybe a link to Google Maps would be good. Uh, what to expect? I wanted to highlight this for a moment. What to expect? So, you know, there's all sorts of different churches out there, different denominations, different styles, different shapes and sizes. So, you know, it really would be good to have at least a little write-up about what to expect in your yeah. service, which you can and, expect. And here's just a pet, I don't know, pet peeve of mine. We just had a, a church this week that... Um, that that you know provided their website and i went to their website and they had um they had all these bullet points set up but they didn't have any pictures mm -hmm. and it's just really hard to determine things you know they say oh our, our dress is casual and you go well, i wonder what casual really is yeah. you know and if they had some pictures right of people at the church or you know, just pictures of their church and, and things go in action there and the leadership. They had no yeah. pictures of the leadership. I just, yeah. I felt like they might have touched a lot of these bases, but they didn't do a great job because they didn't have any pictures. Yeah. So Images help. Yeah, yeah it, images do make a difference. And uh, that's a good point, Steve. Uh, absolutely. Uh, what to expect, uh, images Especially on your Especially in the what to expect, yeah. Yeah. Uh, another thing is, is, is maybe some people haven't thought about this, but you might want to include the 
why. So in other words, you know, the vision of your church, why are you guys doing what you're doing? I mean, you might say, well, that's a no brainer. Well, but different people have different ideas on things. And so, uh, you know, the vision of your church, uh, the culture of your church, that should be really easily viewable. Mm -hmm. All right. So number one is the website is the front yeah. door is the new yes. front door. So yeah. you need to polish that up. Yep. Make sure it's good. I know that uh, I was a short digression. Um, I had a friend of mine that built a built a home that he designed, custom designed, and he went to great lengths to get a front door from. I don't know. He, had, he it was shipped from a barn or it was. It wasn't. Anyway, his front door was super important to him, and the front door on the house. So okay. all right. And, and he got it from great a barn. He no, he he had it shipped. You know, he grew up in, um, where's Purdue in uh, Indi in Indiana. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So um, he grew up in Indiana, and he had I don't know this large door that he had. He thought was the coolest door in the world. Oh, and he had okay. that thing shipped. I don't know. If it, I don't think it came off a barn, but he had it shipped <laughs> to his house. But it was it was the signature piece. It was yeah. the front door yeah. for yeah. his, and he, he had a super nice house. So yeah. anyway, front door is important and that's your website. Yeah. That reminds me though. My church, our front door needs some work on it, some painting, literal front door, but anyhow, <laughs> I'll make a note of that and move on. So the second point here we want to make about first impressions and lasting first impressions is social media. And again, we've banged this drum quite a bit. One thing we do want to emphasize very quickly here is so using social media is more than just sharing your weekend services is more than just sharing events it, it's it's other things included it's 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 you know uh, maybe images and 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 some some inspirational oh, yeah. things and and, and right. also corresponding with people yeah i think the key is to not use it as kind of a broadcast thing here's what's happening but more as a relational thing a talking yeah. thing so and, and that means that when you know people like your like an image or like something, you know, you maybe respond to them. If they have a question, if they make a comment, you know, respond to them and, yeah. and let it be, let it really be social. I mean, the whole thing with social is what interact, you know, if you're social, yeah. you're interactive with people. So, uh, you know, use social media, but don't just use it as a, as a way to just, you know, get something out there. There's all sorts of things you can use scripture and different projects going on that your church might be involved. You can put some of that on there. Uh, but it's all about connecting with your community. Right. So let's move on here as you Moving know. Moving on, number say. three in our list. Three. So we have seven minutes for a yeah. first impression. Yeah, so there's different stats out there about this, but most would agree that you have a very short amount of time to make a first impression. Uh, yeah, that's basically saying that within seven to ten minutes of someone mm -hmm. arriving at your church, they're yep. deciding whether they're going to come back or not. Yep. And that means the parking lot. Uh, they I mean, they, I mean, they, even when they move in the parking lot. So, right. you know, it's, it's hospitality is very important. And look, there are some people that you don't want on your hospitality team. Okay. They're not that they're not nice people and they're not good people, but there are some people that are very hospitable. I think of, of the, the gal at the church I used to be involved, which you're still involved in Kathy Duncan, just yeah. a different, different last name now, but Kathy was very hospitable. Kathy and Bell. She Kathy Bell be offended Duncan. not hearing her. I know. I know. I, I, it's Kathy Bell Duncan. So anyhow, well, she's got another last name. But anyhow, so, it's an art and, you know, greeting people and you should have the right people on that team. <laughs> yeah. I know that you talk about our church here um, that it, we started going a very long time ago. And I remember my first impressions pulling into the parking lot were, this is this church is way too far from my house. It's in a bad location. Yes. I was my vote was not doing this guy again as I'm getting out of the car. Yeah. Uh, but then went through the front door and got um, Ani. You know Ani. I remember Ani. Very elderly well. lady giving my kids mm -hmm. high fives and just yep. really connecting with them. And I was like, woo! They just yeah. moved me back into the. Yeah, I think I'll come here again maybe. Yeah, so. Ani was a sweetheart. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and to your point, there are things that you can overcome. And, and you know, you have a, a great team, a, some several people that are really hospitable. You can overcome some things 
that, that, you know, like you said, you pull in the place, uh, maybe not the best first impression in the parking lot, but when yeah, you get inside. It was, it was too far away. That was my number yeah. one concern. I was like, wow, I don't want to be involved in a, in a church that, because <laughs> I just that left was... the church in California when we moved here where we were super connected, but it, the church was a half hour drive away. Yeah. So everything we did was half hour drive. Uh, and how long ago was that? Because you were there. I mean, I, I knew Jeff and those guys uh, for, for many years is, before I was a part of things. But you came in the early 90s, right? Yeah, this was been 94. Yeah, that was Way right back before when. I came on staff. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, all right. So let's move on here. Uh, the fourth point we want to make here is you have uh, opportunities to make some impressions during your service. That's our fourth bullet point here, during the service. So what we're getting at here is... If you want to make an impact on your visitors, there's some things you ought to consider during your actual service. And here's one of my pet peeves, okay? Introduce yourself. So you have different people that might be coming on the platform, might be coming on the stage. Uh, you you may have a number of people, some people or you know, your worship leader, your music director, somebody make an announcement, somebody may be doing a reading, I don't know, prayer request, somebody praying. You know, not just the pastor. There's other people many times involved in your presentation. Uh, and I, I will actually the church I'm going to now, when I first visited these guys, they had a special speaker and they didn't even introduce her. <laughs> it's like she's got up, start talking and going, OK, I know this isn't the pastor. This is a special speaker. I just knew that because I had a little background information. So introduce yourself and. Uh, that's a very important thing uh, to to just do, even uh, if you feel like everybody knows you. Yeah, who you are and what's your role. Yeah, that's true. I'm Chad. I'm the worship pastor. Let's yeah. stand to worship. Absolutely. Uh, all right. And so number two and under the number four here, or the <laughs> second sorry. point of during the service here is just talking about not using inside language and names and things. Yeah. And so uh, just talk yeah. like you would with hanging out with friends. Yeah, we, we, you know, we've beaten this one to death as well in the past. But yeah, you know, there's different things. We've, we've called it Christianese and different things that, uh, uh, you know, we term or, or things within your church that, that you know of. Uh, uh, we, uh, in fact, I'll give your church an example again. Uh, at the movies, we, we, uh, your church and many churches kind of do a thing where they have maybe a, a, a three or four week series where they take movie clips and they run movie clips and they kind of use those to prove your point. And, you know, I mean, they would still use scripture, but the movie kind of illustrates a point that you're making a clip or two. And uh, we used to call it, you know, come to Alive's, Alive was the name of the church, Alive's uh, ATM. We would a ATM different places. Well, what's ATM to an outsider? Uh, oh. Is that the teller machine, automatic teller machine? What is that? Well, we, it was at the movies, but... We just were so used to calling it or, or labeling it ATM that, you know, people that weren't used to that would come in and go, what's ATM stand for? Right. So it doesn't have to be Christianese. It could be it could be other things that just going on in your church, you know, that uh, you've got names for or initials for or whatever. So whatever you do, try to uh, try not to use those kind of things and explain your you know, well, that's the next point. So, yeah. Anyway. So next is explaining your yeah. processes, which yeah. um our church has started to do a little bit. It just kind of said, "Hey, you're, we're going to be, you're going to be here for about an hour. We're going to worship for mm -hmm. 20 minutes or so, yep. and then we're going to have a message." And yeah, mm -hmm. so you that's can, just yep. explaining what's going to happen yep. and when and that sort yeah. of thing. Uh, a lot of churches years ago used to have an order of service, and they would put the order of service in the program, and uh, that can get a little, that can sound a little religious, but actually, it's not such a bad idea because it gives. Mm -hmm people especially newer people an idea of what's coming up next you know mm -hmm. am i going to be stuck listening to this choir for the next two hours or what's going on you know and, yeah. and so it, not a bad idea to have some kind of an order of service either listed or at least explain it very quickly yes all right and then next under that one is announce a time to capture guest info so what we mean by announce a time to capture guest info what we're talking about here is uh what my church does and i think yours does this as well is we have a connection card and so we we hand that out with uh some program notes and you know things are happening and and that little card is what we ask everybody not just first timers but first time guests but everybody actually to to fill out that connection card prayer request maybe they want to get on our little email list uh maybe respond to something they saw in the program or the bulletin uh, so it's always kind of good to say, hey, you know, we'll 
here's a connection card. Uh, you know, if you'd like to, we'd appreciate it if you fill it out. This is your first time here. That would be great. And again, maybe you have a gift for first timers. We can talk about that later. But you know, say, hey, we're we're going to collect these. Inf- we're going to collect these cards at the end of our service today. So you know, just explain it a little bit. All right. All right next point under during the service things is yeah. every Sunday is someone's first Sunday. So I guess it's yep. just remember that there is somebody there that it's their first Sunday. Yep. And so it's kind of speak it's, to them it's, by it's, announcing, introducing yourself and defining the process. And yeah, yeah, it's, again, you know, a lot of times you go through some of these things we're talking about and you're thinking, uh, who cares? I've said this thing 150 times. Well, you, can't, you have new people coming. And that's not the case. They don't know that. So uh, just remember, it's somebody's first Sunday. If you can keep that in mind, it will help you uh, kind of navigate through that whole process. All right. Okay. Number five on our list here. So number five has to do with following up, personal follow up uh, with people that come and you, but here's the little uh, caveat. You, you don't want to do it in a threatening way where you in, are invading their personal space. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you do want to have a personal touch with people and some people eat it up. Some people are a little bit hands off, but uh, you know, you want to at least connect with your first time guest in some manner, some way. And the goal is not necessarily to get them to come again. It's just to kind of get to know them and make sure you're available to them if they have any questions. All right. Okay. See, we're so, just zipping through all this, right? Yeah. So Number good. six, introduction to your church. So what are we talking about here? Well, uh, this is something you should really talk about often. And it's, it's an idea about look, uh, guys. If you like it here, if you if you've had a good experience, you want to get to know our church a little better, get to know what we believe, maybe a little bit of our history, uh, where we feel like we're going, you know, our vision. Uh, you should probably have something set up where there are some steps that those new people can can take, as pre- preferably the first step. So it might be a gathering that you have once a month. Uh, it might be, uh, you know, and uh, somewhere in the church, it, it might, I mean, there's some people that actually have it every Sunday. They have a place where you can go afterwards and meet the pastor mm-hmm. or meet some of the staff. Uh, it's, it's really uh, giving people an opportunity to learn more about your church, introducing who your church is and what you guys believe and where you're going. Right. I know at our church, I don't know if we do it every month, maybe every other month, maybe it is every month, but there's a... It's just kind of an intro to the church, a mm-hmm. one hour. Um, mm-hmm. Here's and it's not during the service or anything, but right. it's it's for those that are committed to. Hey, I want to learn more about this place. Yep, yep. So. Uh, there's various ways to do that. You you know you could. I mean, uh, years ago we 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 called it class 101. You know, and then there was other steps, class 201. And you know, I, I don't know that that whole thing may not be. Uh, up to date, but you can still have gatherings, you know, and you can still do things uh, that create paths for people to to get involved and to get connected. All right. Okay. Number seven on our list. Yeah. Speaking of path, uh, really, you ought to develop a path. And we're not necessarily talking about, quote, programs. We're talking about, you know, we don't want to give people so many options that they, they're not going to pick anything, but at least give them a path to growing spiritually, uh, a path to, uh, you know, maybe eventually discovering their gifts and talents, a way they can get involved. Uh, you know, and there's there's ways you can do that. There's church management systems. We have, uh, our company has myflock.com, and we have lots of great tools. In fact, you'll be really excited about this, Steve. I've got a new person working with my church, and we already use MyFlock, and we use a lot of the tools, but we really haven't used much of the outreach tool and by golly, I got a new person that's going to start using the outreach tool. All right. To follow up with people. That's great. Yeah, exactly. And so there's other, you know, there's content management systems, church management systems out there. Uh, you should really take advantage of that and, and get people involved. And when I say involved, I mean, oh. get some of your leadership team involved and people you can trust to help connect these people. Yeah. So I guess the key here under this point is, it's not just a list of programs, you know, do this, do that. It's more of a path. You have a, right. you know, people are going to journey down yeah. a particular path. And so you you would be able to recommend, 
you know, we're real big on the next steps. So right. everyone's next step may be different because depending on where they, they are on the path, but you have this path that's designed so that people know that, you know, I'm not going to get involved with this thing because I'm on this, I'm at this place in the right. path. So then my next step is obviously this, you know, come to right. the intro to my church um, yeah. gathering. So, yeah. Yeah. In other words, it's not, you don't have just a, just a smorgasbord of stuff, you know, like here, get involved. Here's six things you can do, six programs or, or eight things going on, you know, pick one of them. Well, you know, when people see that, most people are like, they're overwhelmed, you know? And, and so, Hey, here's, here's the first step. And, and, you know, there's a path you can take that starts right here. Right. And so it's really all about what we're talking about here is all about getting people, you know, connected, uh, making a good first impression, but also, making a good second impression and third. In other words, they're, they're moving along, they're getting to know people, they build relationship, they build trust. And, and, you know, they, they end up serving, they, they grow because they do this, they end up growing spiritually, but they also end up helping the church and hopefully help their community. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very valuable thing to do. It's not just about holding services and, you know, hoping, hoping people just, you know, keep coming back without any kind of, uh, you know, pathways. All right. So we made it through our seven, through. Yeah. our seven points for seven, making a good impression. Seven points plus a few other extra things thrown in there that, you know, that connected it. But yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we we're good. We're done in record time. So look, uh, we'd love to get your feedback on this. Uh, you can send us an email support at streaming church TV. Uh, that's one of our products. As Steve mentioned, we do streaming video. We do mobile apps. We have uh, content management stuff. We have a bunch of things that we that we have for churches, and we do tech stuff. And sometimes this podcast is about tech related things. Other times it's about what we talked about today. A little mixture, but we love the church and we want to help the church grow. We want to help you as a pastor, as a volunteer, as a leader or potential leader. We want to help you grow and and uh, you know uh, make life better for everybody involved in your circle so that's the whole idea behind it so i guess we're done steve that's it all right good deal all right thank you steve and folks again thank you for spending some time with the uh, with us today with the church solutions podcast we really appreciate it you know you can always subscribe to this uh, you know, wherever you get your podcast, you can subscribe and they'll get it in your what email, your inbox <laughs> every week. It will show it. wherever you're it not a podcast guy. huh? I'm it shows not. up in your podcast feed. It's on oh, your okay. playlist. Your, your podcast feed. Yeah. OK. Yeah. yeah there you go. Just. Yep. That's how you, you don't have to worry about it. And we're on YouTube, too. But nobody. Yep. if you want to see us, if you want to see what we look like which I highly discourage you from doing this, at least when it comes to me. <laughs> but you can see us on YouTube. We're on YouTube. Just look for streamingchurch.tv on YouTube. And I, I'm sure you'll see these podcasts because we're doing video as well. And we're, right. yeah, we're other places. All right, good enough. Folks, thanks again for the time. Thank you for the privilege of your time. We'll catch you again next time on another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Take care. <laughs>